This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at A Noise Within for their presentation of A Flea in Her Ear. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with... Alan Blumenfeld. I was born in New York. I studied theater in San Francisco. I moved to L.A. in 82. I'm a resident artist here at A Noise Within. I'm a company member at Theatrical Botanicum. I do two to four plays a year. Uh, I've done three or four hundred television shows as guest star. I've done about two dozen films. The theater is where my love and heart is. You know what I saw recently on TV? Tin Men. Tin Men, the first film I did in L.A. It was the first, no, uh, not the first, but the first big role I did. 87, I think it was. Shot in Baltimore. It was great fun. So much fun. Thank you so much. That show was magnificent. Okay, and which character did you play? I played Etienne, the valet, and uh, another character, which shall remain surprised for the audience when they come see the show. Uh, Etienne is the valet. He's been with them for years. He's married to a younger woman and trying to make sure that her uh, needs are met and uh, does not have a very successful time doing that. Uh, the other character is a part of the um, House of Ill Repute and uh, is a, a great surprise, I hope, for the audience. Uh, this is a classical theater. Uh, do you fancy yourself a classical artist? Because you've done a lot of TV. I've done a lot of TV and movies. Yes, I was trained at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. Uh, eventually got an MFA there. My wife and I met there starting in 73. It's where Jeff and Julia, who run Noise Within, they were trained about 10 years or 15 years after us. Uh, so I was trained as a classical, uh, an actor who does classical theater and classical repertory theater. So playing a lead in one character, in one, in one play, a small supporting role in another, understudying one and teaching. And I think the training in what is classical theater, that is the great classical uh, plays and modern plays and Shakespeare, Moliere, uh, and, and all of the great Greek and early plays is tremendously effective training for doing film and television because it gives you a real grounding in what the actor's craft is. I'm told that a lot of the roles, the new roles, that are going to overseas actors because they actually have more theatrical experience. What are your comments on that? Yeah, it's very interesting. Well, I mean, there's the political aspect, which is that uh, European actors protect, uh, even Canadian actors protect their unions. Uh, I wish our union uh, were, had more protection. Or I wish, actually, what I would prefer is if the Canadian and European institutions would allow our union actors to uh, be, uh, if, to allow the union to be as porous as our union is, so we could travel there. It is true, uh, there's no question that most of the well-trained actors at this point are coming from Europe and Canada because in the United States, young actors are aimed towards film and television because that's where you can make a living. Uh, I'm 63 years old, so I was trained as a repertory actor. And most young actors today, there are some who are, but most of them are not trained for that because they don't see a way of making a living and it doesn't have the kind of juicy pizzazz. So I think the Europeans, and the Brits especially, and the Canadians, the Aussies, they have a very strong tradition as a culture of supporting repertory theater. And in the United States, theater is still sort of a red-headed stepchild or a secondary source of entertainment to film and television. So what are your advice to uh, young actors? Is it really necessary to have theatrical training? Yes, I believe theatrical training is essential for an actor because you have to understand the actor's craft. Film and television, uh, film is a director and editor's medium. Television is a writer and producer's medium. And theater is the actor's medium. That is to say, the actor is the one who, once the lights go down and the curtain goes up, the actor is there doing the work. In film and television, you can do your work, but it's put together as a mosaic in little pieces and cut up. Actors, I believe, should have strong classical theater training in order to understand their own craft, their own, this is an obnoxious phrase, but instrument, your voice and body, to be able to have a, a greater range and then to be able to play more roles and be able to solve problems on their own. And what did you think of this play? I love this play very much. This is one of the great plays. Uh, uh, it, it's probably his funniest play, certainly one of his most popular. Surprising how few audiences know it. It's a great, great, hysterically fun time. And the audience was spectacular tonight and has been all through previews. It, it speaks to everyone. It's about sex and, and, and longing and human frailty and mistaken identity. And it's just a, a, a riotous, riotous romp.
Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, man. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with... Elise Murto. I'm from Detroit. I went to school at Western Michigan University, started out at the Goodman Theater in Chicago, and have worked in Los Angeles and New York, and do a little bit of TV, film, commercial, and, and a lot of theater. Ken, I have a degree in music theater performance, so I started out as a musical performer. I took to the classics, was sent to London on a scholarship, so I do Shakespeare, I'll do Moliere, I did a, a, a modern uh, play last year, um, a, a world premiere of an, a, a modern um, play. So um, I feel like I do a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, farce, I think the reason I take to farce so well is it is very musical. Comedy is timing, as is music. So some people hear it, some people don't. I, I hear it in my head when it's not funny <laughs> and when it doesn't work. Um, and I also was a dancer, so... Um, it's, it's similar to me. <laughs> I played Ramon Shandabees. Ramon Shandabees thinks her husband is having an affair. She gets a flea in her ear, and she decides with her best friend to write this letter to get her husband to come to this hotel and then to catch him in the act. But he sends his best friend instead, and hilarity ensues, and mayhem. And she's caught right in the middle, and she caused it all. <laughs> Great, so what do you think of this performance? Oh, it's hard to tell from the inside out. I'm with an amazing cast and an amazing director at a fabulous theater, so um, it feels pretty good, and it is very athletic. A very athletic show. <laughs> Yo, I love the performance. Thank you. And of course, the dresses. we got to mention the beautiful costumes by Angela Kalin. I feel very lucky to be wearing such gorgeous couture 1950s clothes. This is a, a classical theater. You've done a lot of television. Uh, do you fancy yourself more of a theater uh, performer? or more a television actor? Hmm. Well, the last two years, I would say I'm definitely more theater. I've done 12 shows in the last two and a half years, back to back. Um, I love TV and film. My bank account loves TV and film, um, but I think I prefer theater. It's, there's nothing like that live, uh, that feeling, that visceral feeling of having the audience right there in front of you. Okay, well, do, do you prefer playing the leading actress, or would you like to play, say, a villain or a character role? Something that really demands you to do a lot of challenging emotions. Well, I've, I've done challenging emotions, modern day drama. Uh, the last show I did here, Figaro, I was not the lead character. I was a secondary character, but she was a, a real character. And uh, I, play, I was a real uh, sort of bobblehead, airheaded, uh, ditzy, fun woman, which was um, delicious to play. Uh, lead roles are fun. Uh, you know, everyone likes to be the lead, but character roles can be really delicious as well. So. Um, uh, yeah, I like to sink my teeth into anything that's interesting. <laughs> for classical theater in particular, do you feel that there's enough challenging roles for women? Because a lot of them was written a long time ago, and they had certain expectations of what a woman would do. Aye, there's the rub. Aye. Yes, at least nowadays women can play the women's roles, where back in the day it was men playing everything. Um, yeah, I mean, most classical plays, there are more men to women. Um, so I count myself lucky to have done a lot of classical theater in the last couple years and have gotten uh, you know, the, the very few parts that are out there. <laughs> well, I love your performance. Thank you so much. I'm, I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. I'm with... Jonathan Bray. I play Turnell. I'm from Boston. I've moved to New York and did a lot of theater there, a little bit of Broadway. Um, most recently, I uh, was in the world premiere of Sideways. I played Jack. I uh, was uh, nominated for a uh, Robbie Award for my performance in Fat Pig as Tom. Uh, that was my most recent performance. Um, and now this. I played Turnell. Turnell is the uh, I, I, Turnell works as a life insurance agent. Uh, Sean DeBees is his boss, and he is trying to have an affair with Sean DeBees' wife. So he's kind of a dim-witted playboy. Yeah. Uh, do you enjoy playing like the villain, or would you prefer? Do you like playing, say, the leading man? I like it all. But but honestly, I'd probably prefer characters. They're always more fun than leading men. I'm basically, a big fan of that because I feel basically you bring a lot of passion to the play, and that basically is more complicated. The leading man, you're basically playing yourself. What do you think about that? 
You know, that's absolutely true, although I don't know, I guess I'm a leading man, but yeah, I, I think it's always fun to play the villain or the character, you know. Leading men have to carry the whole show sometimes, the story goes through them. Jeff's the leading man, really, in this, and he does a great job. I speak to a lot of uh, actors who are actually working in Hollywood. They say a lot of the new roles are actually going to theater actors from overseas because they say there's not enough training, not enough theatrical training in Hollywood. What do you think about that? Uh, I, I have long felt that uh, there's a lot of young actors who don't really do theater and don't take training seriously, so it's good to hear in a sense. I just hope that the casting people in LA recognize all the trained theater actors who are here. Okay, so uh, basically uh, my show, a lot of community theater actors listen to my show, a lot of students. Uh, what kind of advice can you give them to help them along with their career? Work, work, work. When I started out, I happened to uh, meet Glenn Close and asked her the same question. She said, work, 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 just wherever you go, make sure you're always working, always in class. It, you know, you're, you as an actor are your own instrument and you have to learn how to play it and it takes a lot of practice and hard work. Well, I loved your play and I loved your performance. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for being on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine. I'm with Rafael Goldstein. Well, I'm a Pasadena, Altadena native. I um, was born and raised in the greater LA area, and uh, I've been a resident artist here at Noise Within since 2012. I played Camille Shondabees, the nephew to uh, Victor Emmanuel Shondabees, who is the um, director of the Paris Life Company, and I have no hard palate, so I speak in vowels. Do you prefer the classics, or do you prefer doing, say, like television, a movie, or something more contemporary? I, uh, I'll take a page from uh, the Brits and uh, uh, do whatever I uh, get paid to do. Um, you know, I, I, I go where the work is, and uh, if it's you know Shakespeare one day, Moyer the next, or uh, you know uh, something on uh, you know a, a crime television show, I'll do that too. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I love your performance. Oh, thank you very much. It, it, uh, it's, uh, it's an athletic event, this show. Um, all, all of the characters are uh, running around uh, wild from the word go, and we all, um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a farce that to be remembered, I think. I'm told in acting that you have to have focus, you have to have movement, and you have to have voice. Could you comment on how you handle voice on this one? <laughs> Well, when 95% of your uh, dialogue is unintelligible, um, you have to rely not only on voice, but on uh, your uh, intention, uh, your vocal and uh, uh, mi a mindful intention. Uh, so uh, speed, dexterity, precision um, is all very important, but uh, I think the most important is uh, clarity, uh, which is funny for me. Uh, yeah, so clarity of intention. Uh, could you define clarity again? Your, your, a lot of your words are unintelligible. What do you mean by clarity? <laughs> well, clarity in the sense that um, you have to be clear um, with your with, with your body, with your face. Yeah, if, if 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 you lose a limb, you have to use the others more gracefully. So that's what I do. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, of course. Uh, nice, uh, nice seeing you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with... Hello there, my name is Jill Hill, and I played Luciano Menonese somewhat in the show. I'm a company member here, and I've been here uh, uh, for almost, uh, next year's our 25th year, and I've done uh, probably over 50 plays here, uh, and um, I've acted, you know, back east, and also uh, done television things and such as, as well, but this is my first love repertory theater, and here I am. I'm a company member to Noise Within. I played Luciano Menonese Estangua. She is the best friend of Raymond, and she comes to town because Raymond has told her that uh, her husband is deceiving her and cheating on her. So I'm going to come help her figure out what she should do about that. So uh, I'm the kind of motherly character, and she's the kind of emotional, crazy character. And our backstory is, is that we went to school and convent together when we were young. <laughs> So do you uh, primarily just do classical theater? Uh, well, uh, I've done all sorts of theater, not just classical, but classical is my first love, and I'm a founding member of this company here at Noise Within. Uh, so basically, I've heard that a lot of uh, young uh, 
parts uh, on television are going to theatrical actors from overseas. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Oh, I, I you know what? I don't. Uh, the way I look at life is everybody's doing what they should. They are supposed to be doing. Uh, there's room for everybody in this beautiful business, and I don't have any problems with anybody doing any type of role. There's enough of a theater for us all to be busy. I think it's all good. Do you prefer playing a leading character or maybe some kind of anti-hero, a villain, or something very, very character? Well, I'm in repertory theater, so I like to play everything. I like to play big, small, middle. I like to do anything, any type of character. I've played all sorts of different characters, from a grandmother to characters to, like what I was playing tonight, somebody in their 30s. So, you know, I, I like to play anything. I'm an actress. <laughs> so, is... Uh, my show, a lot of community theater actors listen to my show, a lot of students listen to my show. Is there any kind of advice you can give them to help, to help them further with their career? You know what I have to say is I have to say if you love it, then do it, was what I have to say. You have to find the joy in it, in your heart to do what you're doing. So uh, find your own private reasons and let that be your motor to take you, take you away. Find the joyfulness in it and uh, the meaning in it. We, we believe a lot in the serving the community in our theater here, and uh, we just love all the relationships with our patrons, so that's important to us too. But be true to yourself and your soul, that's what I say. So what do you think about this performance? We had a great opening night. I've got lots of friends here. I'm so happy, and uh, I think it's, uh, come see the show, everybody. A noise within, and come see Flea in Her Ear. It's a fantastic show. I think we did a good job, hopefully. All right, thank you very much for being on the show. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with Luis Fernandez Hill. I've been acting since 2000. I started in New York. I'm originally from Spain, which was perfect for the role because the, the guy is a Spaniard, a crazy Spaniard, exactly what I am. And uh, yeah, I mean, I basically it started. I moved, I moved to LA in 2003, and then yeah, I've been since then enjoying the sunny California. I play Don Carlos Omenides de Stangua. Un hombre que, oh, a man that, um, bottom line, he feels very lonely. He's scared of people, like, you know, not befriending, befriend him or whatever. And he's extremely jealous because of that. But at the same time, he, he has this, like, low self-esteem that he has to prove himself by seducing women. So he ends up getting paid with the same coin. I'm not going to say anymore to not reveal the plot. Do you think theater is different from uh, the United States opposed to where you're from, from Spain? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously more, I don't know if the word professional is the right one, but obviously they're, they're more experienced, more, everything seems safer and less chaotic uh, in terms of all the technical aspects. And then acting wise, yeah, I think people here are way more committed to their craft. Yeah, but is, is Spain nationalized their uh, theater, so that you have, you're basically a government employee, and basically you don't have to worry about being a starving artist. Well, if you get in, but then you have to know someone that is going to give you the chance, and it's, it's not like in Hollywood that uh, everybody's going to see you once, at least, and it's up to you to, to do your best, but in Spain, they may not see you at all, ever. So no, it's not, it's not that solid and that safe and secure, the acting in Spain. So which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the Spanish theater or the United States theater? The United States theater, definitely. Yeah. Because the actors are more committed to their craft. Yeah. Okay. Alright, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm with... Allison Elliott. I'm a resident artist here at A Noise Within. I, um, I've been with the company for a long time and uh, I went to UCLA. I studied theater there and I've done a ton of shows here with the company. I play Antoinette. She is the maid in the Sean DeVise household. Antoinette is uh, married to the valet in the Sean DeVise household and she's uh, having an affair with Camille, uh, who is the nephew of Sean DeVise. And uh, she ends up in the Frisky Puss Hotel with, Sean De uh, with Camille and, uh, and her husband catches her in the Frisky Puss and then comes back and confronts her and it's just insanity from there. Yeah. Great. Uh, so when did you start acting? I started uh, when I was about seven. So I started here. My parents are Jeff and Julia Elliott, so I've been around the company since I was very young. 
uh, how did you uh, first get into it? Did you say, I want to act, I really want to do it, or did your parents say, well, why don't you try doing this? Maybe it's something you might want to like. I, I always had an interest in doing it, and it helped that my parents were involved in the theater. There was a period of time where I wanted to save endangered species, but I decided that performing was something I enjoyed more. <laughs> yeah. This is actually a recurring theme through my show. I'm trying to define what an artist really is. Because a lot of artists start at a very young age. And yeah. I'm, I, I come up with this thought, maybe just born differently from everyone else. Yeah, I think so, maybe. I think it's different for everyone. Some people are born feeling like they want to be artists. And others sort of discover it along the way and never thought they'd end up at this point. But really have some kind of passion for it, I think. I think it's different per person, honestly, yeah. Yeah, and how do you think an artist is raised? Because a lot of people have done a very bad job. They force their kids, you know, every Saturday you got to go to training, theater class. You, that means you got to skip on all your friends' birthdays because they all oh, have it on Saturday, right? And if there's ever an audition, they got to pull you out of school and drive you up to a commercial. What, what, what do you think is good advice for raising an artist? I think that the artist really has to have an interest in it and it can't be something that's forced upon someone and I think that the parents have to be supportive of that and you have to love it. I mean, that's what's going to drive you through. I, I think that that has to be there, that, that love and passion for what you're doing. Yeah. What kept you motivated when you were young? Because again, if you if your parents are here, you can see the show anytime you want. You get basically you get jaded pretty quickly. What kept you motivated? Well, I I wanted to continue to be around, so I, I felt like it was almost second nature for me. I didn't feel like it was a burden. So spending a lot of time here wasn't a chore. So it was my choice too. I mean, actually, sometimes it wasn't because I had to be here and no no one could watch me. But it, it was my home, so I, I, I didn't think anything of it. Yeah. Was there a difference between you thinking maybe I don't want this and also just being downright lazy? Because people are lazy. People could just say, no, I really don't want to do this. I'm not that interested. But they were just being lazy. I mean, what do you think of that? Hmm. I think that anything that you want to do well is going to be really hard. And I think that the same kind of hard work and discipline comes with being an artist. So if you're motivated enough and want to work hard to be good at something, it's going to take it's going to take that work. Yeah. <laughs> That's tough. Okay. So uh, what do you think of the show? What do I think of this show? I think it's a great show. I think I think it's very challenging because it, it's so specific. This particular production, you know, there's door slamming that have to be simultaneous, and it's a, it's a. Once you get that under your belt, the specificity, it's it can be a lot of fun. It can be. It's a lot of fun to perform. At this point, too, in the process, it's been awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with Jeremy Rabb. I've been an actor for about uh, 20 years. I moved to LA about 10 years ago. Um, graduated from the classical acting program in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, the American Repertory Theater Institute at Harvard, and uh, done regional theater throughout the country, some television and film and have been a resident artist at A Noise Within since last year. I started in 2009, but I became a company member last year. I played Ferreal, who is the proprietor of the Frisky Puss Hotel, uh, an ex-military man who tries to keep a tight ship and has trouble uh, reconciling the fact that he runs a bordello. Uh, and so he takes it out on his, uh, his poor staff, Poche in particular, he kicks him a great deal. <laughs> So what do you think of this play? I think it's hilarious. I think that uh, you can't do much better than Fado. He's able to capture the ridiculousness of farce so brilliantly. It's so precise so that when it is ramped up to such a high intensity of craziness, you're right there with him because he's earned it. He plants props and storylines so cleverly that it's just a blast. So doing it is hilarious. But I, I, watching the audience and hearing them ride the wave of this ridiculous story is just utterly fun. Really, really fun. 
I've been told by a lot of actors in Hollywood that a lot of the great roles are now going to classically train actors overseas. Do you think it's necessary to be trained in theater or actually nowadays be an actor? Uh, well, you know, you'll get different opinions on that. I think um, having a nice background in terms of theatrical training is really helpful. You know, you work on your voice and your body and you're very specific in terms of how you approach a role in a play. And, you're very aware of, you know, all the trials and tribulations that go with, you know, beginning the process of, of, of a role. And so you're, you have more of a foundation from which to work from. Uh, so it's nice to see that that sort of training is being rewarded as well. So I'm obviously a fan of that. And yeah, I would like to see more of that in, in show business, for sure. Well, great. I loved your performance. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Ashley Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with Michael Bateman. I'm the managing director of A Noise Within in Pasadena. As for myself, I went to college at Stanford where I did a degree in something else but found myself doing 100% theatre all the time instead. I did my graduate degree in theatre management at Yale. Um, I took a show to the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, that's where I learned how to love producing. And then I came out here. My love was Shakespeare and the classics and Jeff and Julia were looking for a managing director to, uh, to come and, and uh, make this new space work and uh, to, to, work with the new, uh, to work with the new community in Pasadena and, and that's what I've been doing. A Noise Within is a classical repertory company that's 24 years old this year. Uh, five years ago, moved from Glendale, and we're working rotating repertory uh, with a resident company of artists. And the show that you saw tonight, uh, Flea in Her Ear, means that they get to trust each other and uh, work together over multiple shows to sort of get down the the kind of the kind of timing, the kind of trust that's necessary to make those you know split second door slamming fast moments work. Yeah, managing director is different from the artistic director. Are you involved in actually the artistic side of it, of choosing which plays are played? No, I don't get involved in choosing which plays are played, but uh, I do work on the budget with the artistic directors so we can see how much each of those plays is going to take to put on. As an artist, is that artistic enough for you? Um, are you kind of being more like an accountant now, opposed to being a, an actor or an artist? <laughs> Well, the speech that I'll give tonight, uh, welcoming everybody, is all about sort of the symphony of people that it takes to produce a show. Uh, you know, and certainly you have the, the designers and the actors and the painters and everybody who goes in to the work that you see on stage. But, you know, I work with the artistic directors to manage the staff and whether it's the bookkeeping or development or marketing, you know, we all have a real passion and love for the theatre. and. Frankly, I like my work to be done by the time the show opens. I like to sit back and watch and not have to stress on stage. <laughs> what is your opinion of the state of theater in Los Angeles? Because I'm, well, I, part of my show is I want more people to actually watch theater. And it turns out, you know, a lot of people in Los Angeles have never been to the theater in their entire life. What do you think about that? Well, I think that LA is a fascinating town in terms of uh, arts and entertainment because there's obviously, you know, the huge television and film industry that, uh, that, that has a huge influence on what the town is about in that sense. But there's so much theater here. There's plenty for people to go and see, should they choose, at all levels. You know, you might have CTG, the Geffen, at the, at the sort of larger end, or the Pantages, something tall from out of town and then you have the mid-sized theaters you have a noise within you have East West and the colony and uh, you know ICT in Long Beach those kinds of sort of mid-level companies that are still paying their artists a professional wage those kinds of things and then you have the 99 seat theaters that are you know taking great new ideas taking big risks and uh, and you know doing them on a, a shoestring budget so it, we have the whole gamut of theater available and a lot of the time it is about getting the message out there um, you know into the crowd and making sure that people know that what you're doing is important yeah, I've noticed a lot of theaters, such as yourself, give discounts for younger uh, students. Is that intentional to try to try to rejuvenate the crowd, kind of get a, a new uh, mix of blood coming in? 
Well, uh, there is a big discussion, you know, in theatre across the country about the the ageing audience. Uh, but a Noise Within has never had a problem with attracting younger patrons. You'll see a lot of uh, younger folks here tonight. And to have a real mix in the audience is a blessing. You know, we have 14,000 students come here per year from, from middle school up through college. And then we do see those college students coming back once they graduate and staying involved. Uh, and having a real mix between the loyal audience that's been with us for 20 something years, their subscribers, they're here all the time for our readings and everything, uh, mixed in with the younger audience who, um, you know, who are newer to theatre, who are out looking for something new and exciting, is a really, uh, it's a good mix, it's a very healthy mix for the entertainment scene. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. My pleasure, thank you very much. A Flea in Her Ear will be playing at A Noise Within from September 6th to November 22nd. For more information, go to www.anoisewithin.org or search for AMB Theater, that's all one word, AMB Theater on Facebook.